Hey guys, uh, Alex here again, and uh, I'm making another video using Google SketchUp because it turns out on um, the last video I made showing the 28-day lunar cycle of the moon and sun together traversing the flat earth map using Gleason's 1982 New Standard Map of the World, uh, some people were confused and didn't realize it was a 28-day cycle uh, and thought it was a 24-hour cycle. So this is the 24-hour cycle of just the sun. Um, now, I didn't add the moon here because the moon stays right next to the sun on the first 24 hours, and then on the second day, they complete a circuit together, and it's slightly further apart. And on the third day, they complete a third circuit, and it's slightly further, even more further apart. And on the fourth day, a little further apart, fifth day, a little further apart, until the 14th day where they're 180 degrees apart. Now, that's what I was trying to depict in the last video, the 28-day cycle, showing that the full moon was a 14-day cycle. Uh, so this right here, what I'm going to show you, is just the, uh, this is the same thing, um, only this one is actually during, uh, during summer, because the last one, the sun was over the equator during, the, during either... Uh, autumn or vernal equinox, and this one is over the Tropic of Cancer in the, in the north, in the northern tropic, uh, about the 23, uh, 23rd degree parallel north, uh, and it it represents the sun in summer. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned before is that I believe that during summer the sun rotate or the the sun acts like a uh, so, I'm sorry, throughout the year, the sun acts like a top winding down. So, during summer, it's a tight, slow circuit. Whereas, during, during the equinoxes, it's a wider, lower, faster circuit. And during winter, it's very low, very fast, and very wide. So, it would be like a winding top, starting off you know, slow and tight in summer a little wider and faster and lower in, during the equinoxes and then real wide, real fast, real low during winter and then a little tighter, a little higher, a little slower during the, the next equinox and then and then back to summer, tight, high, uh, slower. And the reason it gets faster and slower is because each one of these represent an hour in a uh, time zone. And so for the United States, uh, you would have, you'd have Pacific Time, uh, Mountain Time, sta uh, Central Standard Time, which is my time zone. Um, I believe this is Eastern Time. Or I got those two confused, but anyway, you have negative, you know, eight, seven, six, five, and four, um, and so I believe that's how that works. But these are the time zones, and Gleason was kind enough to add them in there for us. Uh, that's why it's one of my my favorite as with equidistant projection. So anyway, on with the animation. So, this is a daily circuit. Now, it's basically just the same day over and over, because if it was completing a day, it would be going, it would be slowly getting lower, faster, and, and wider. And so, the, the reason for that is because at the speed it's going here, this is traversing every time zone in exactly one hour. Now, look what the time zone looks like out here. Look what one hour looks like out here over the Tropic of Capricorn in the 20th. 23rd uh, degree south parallel, uh, it's actually a lot wider than the 23 degree north parallel during the, over the Tropic of Cancer. And so it, it's, it would have to be a lot faster to cover that much ground in one hour. And so that's why I believe. And then, of course, in, the, in Vedic cosmology, uh, it states that the sun is higher in altitude, closer to the center and lower in altitude further out, so that's why I've made my model like this. Now, I plan on making a video that actually shows it winding down like a top, um, but that's going to take some time. So, for now, here is the sun during summer, and we'll bring Polaris and line her up. Line her up real good now. I'm just kidding. Where are you at, man? There you are, bruh. Oh, Christ. What have I done? There you go. And so that's uh, that's the sun in one day um, during summer. So I hope this kind of cleared some stuff up. Uh, and again, the moon would be right next to it. You know, during a, a new moon, it would complete a circuit side by side. And then on the second day, it would be a little lagging behind it. 
the third day lagging a little further, fourth day lagging a little further, until the 14th day when it's lagging so far behind that it's they're 180 degrees apart. And then for the next 14 days, the sun slowly catches back up with the moon. So on the last video, it was a 28-day cycle. This is a 24-hour cycle. So yeah, that's my five-minute video on the summer uh, solstice sun, motions of the sun uh, over the flat earth plane. Um, have a great day.